Good morning, everyone. I just want to say a few words briefly on Mali and the discussion that we are having uh, on that topic in the Council today. We've had uh, an informative uh, exchange with Under Secretaries General Feltman and Ladsus on the way forward in Mali. From the U.S. point of view, we fully support uh, a multi-dimensional, integrated UN operation under Chapter 7, led, led by a strong Secretary General's special representative that can sustain the security gains made by French and African forces in recent months and galvanize the political process. The purpose of the UN operation, in our view, should be to contribute to the development of a secure, inclusive, and democratic state in Mali that includes all of the country's communities uh, and to support the full restoration of Malian sovereignty and territorial integrity. The transition from a FISMA to a UN blue helmeted force under Chapter 7 must occur in our judgment as soon as security conditions permit and its role ought to be to stabilize the liberated areas and assist the Malian state in protecting civilians. Effective UN leadership of such a mission can very importantly spur concrete steps towards a political transition, including an inclusive national dialogue, a reconciliation process, and democratic elections. So we'll be consulting with our partners on the Council uh, on next steps for such a blue helmeted operation and we'll be working with our French colleagues and others on a draft resolution to accomplish that over the coming weeks. Yes. Uh, Ambassador, the uh, ambassador from Cote d'Ivoire said that uh, a FISMA should be integrated into a UN peacekeeping force with a robust mandate. Does that look likely? Well, that's, I don't want to speak for the uh, ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire, but certainly the U.S. view is that uh, any UN blue helmeted force in this context needs to have a robust Chapter 7 mandate to stabilize liberated areas and assist the Malian government uh, in protecting civilians. It also needs to have a very strong political component uh, that is focused on helping the Malians uh, put in place a transition process that is inclusive, that is credible, that supports the democratic transformation and institution building. Uh, and it gets at some of the root causes of the problems that have plagued Mali for many years. What, what does the U.S. think of this idea of a, of a parallel force, probably made up of French troops? And if, you, if you're in favor of it, do you think it should be under, under the U.N. mandate, under some kind of U.N. control, or more like the Force Licorne in, in Ivory Coast, which is kind of a parallel force? This is something force. that was uh, raised and discussed in, the, um, uh, in our consultations. And frankly, I think uh, we need real unified understanding and clarity on what is meant by this so-called parallel force. I think the United States and most members of the Security Council take the view that robust counterterrorism uh, operations in the far north of Mali uh, are not properly uh, or reasonably a UN mission and that those that have been engaged in those operations to date, plus others that may wish to join at the invitation of the Malian government, uh, ought to do so and will need to do so separate and apart from uh, the United Nations force which we view as principally having a stabilization mission on the military side. Uh, there have been some alternative suggestions raised today about the nature of a parallel force uh, that, that we have some questions about. Uh, but obviously we do think there ought to be uh, the, uh, and we ought to expect that there will continue to be French and other partners of Mali engaged in robust counterterrorism operations in the far north. We would support that. We don't see that that needs to be part of the UN mandate nor uh, authorized by the United Nations, although I don't think we would object to the, the blessing of it by the Security Council. But that is how we envision any parallel military presence. Uh, there were some alternative ideas, as I suggested, uh, floated today, which, which seemed to suggest that there would be a force alongside the United Nations doing the hard work uh, uh, of, of stabilization and peace enforcement, and we, we don't uh, understand the logic of that, frankly. No, let, let's stay on Mali if we can. 
Yes, on, on Molly. Do you have anyone in mind? Are there any candidates who would be the special representative? And then secondly, the ambassador of Mali seemed to indicate that the Tuaregs were not, had to dissolve themselves. Is there a question on the Tuaregs? Yeah, what's going to happen with them? What do you think should happen? And your first question? Are there candidates for the special? Well, I, I think that's yeah. probably a question better addressed to the Secretary General and to the Secretariat. But obviously, our view is that uh, there are potential candidates out there, and it's very important that we find one who is uh, experienced, uh, a strong hand, uh, with uh, very capable political skills as well as experience in managing a complex and integrated uh, UN mission. With respect to the Tuaregs, obviously the, the Tuaregs are an integral community within uh, Mali. Uh, there is a history of, of, uh, of conflict and grievance uh, that, that needs to be acknowledged and addressed. And we think it's very important that the authorities in Bamako uh, deal uh, effectively and creatively in a political context uh, with their Tuareg community and ensure that they are, uh, their concerns are addressed and that they are treated uh, appropriately as democratic consolidation uh, moves forward. Sudan? Yeah, I want to ask you on Sudan. There, there have been a lot of, there was an announcement by President Omar al-Bashir that, quote, all political prisoners will be released, and some are calling it glasnost in Khartoum. I wanted to, I, what's the U.S. view of, of these announcements? That would be nice. Um, obviously, we, we note the announcement uh, by uh, President Bashir that he intends to release all political prisoners and hold a national dialogue. Uh, and I gather there were at least a handful that were released yesterday. We certainly would welcome and encourage the release of all political prisoners. Uh, and, and we would hope that political prisoners would be defined as broadly in their release as they've been defined in their capture. Uh, and that indeed if that were to occur, that would be an important step uh, towards uh, the kind of uh, inclusive political process that, that is uh, overdue in Khartoum and that would strengthen the, uh, uh, the Sudanese state and uh, begin to address uh, many of the, the g concerns and grievances that have been at the root of uh, the long-standing conflicts in various parts of Sudan. Thank you.